Now for me, fall is defined by fun foods. After an entire year of getting this summer body in shape, and once that Halloween candy starts rolling around, I just lose all willpower, and I just want nostalgic comfort food all the time. Basically, what I'm saying is, I've been eating like shit. So in an attempt to squeeze more vegetables into my diet right now, I've mashed together two of my favorite things, broccoli and cheesy gordita crunches, the tacos that changed my life as a kid. A way to both satisfy my need for vegetables right now and the taste of nostalgia that I always long for this time of year. First, let's prep the broccoli. Just got one large head of broccoli right here and we're just gonna clean up some of these stalks off the side. Now, I wanna use all of this broccoli, but this part of the broccoli and this part of the broccoli cook differently. What I'm gonna do is just release the florets from the stems. Set those off to the side. Now, this isn't really good eats right here. You could probably use it if you want, but I'm gonna get rid of it. That's too hard for me. And then just basically cut them into strips. We're looking to essentially turn these into a fine dice. So try and cut them into these little planks, then into these little strips. And from those strips, you can turn them into little dices that are gonna cook very quickly. And just like a ground beef taco filling, we wanna break this down into smaller bites, but I don't wanna mince this into something that has no texture. We cut them into these fine little dices that still have a little bite to them. It's gonna be really nice texture inside of the tacos. And then with the florets, we're essentially going to do the same thing. Slice the florets into planks, then cut those planks into thinner strips, and then cut those strips into a little dice. This part of the broccoli cooks a little faster, so you can be a little bit more coarse with it. And also, if the pieces are too big, it won't fit into the taco shell properly. So we've got our broccoli diced up. This part of the broccoli is just gonna get started first, which is why it's in a second bowl. So we can set those off to the side. One large or two smaller cloves of garlic. We're gonna slice it in half and then just slice it as thin as we can. Then we're gonna use a couple cherry peppers. Pull out, you know, five or six or seven, however you like it. We're just gonna chop it up into a little bit of a dice. Now again, I want them chopped up fine enough to disperse into the broccoli and to give a pop of acidity and spice, but not small enough to get lost in. Next, we have the spice blend. First, we do about one tablespoon of chili powder. Now, I'm just gonna make a batch and I'm gonna decide how much I add later, but this is usually the formula I just go with when I make this. After that, I've got some sumac, which I like to use. Maybe a half tablespoon of that. Then I've got my paprika, about a half tablespoon of that. Then we've got the garlic and onion powder, another half tablespoon of each of those. Next up, we got the other pear, which is the cumin and coriander, another half tablespoon of each of those. And then finally, for a little heat, we do about a teaspoon of the cayenne. No salt, we're gonna add salt later. Just mix it up. Now you can use this spice blend for a lot of things. And then we have the tortillas, which is the defining characteristic of the cheesy gordita crunch. It uses both a corn tortilla and a flour tortilla, the corn being crispy, adding both a soft, chewy element to a crispy, crunchy element. That's what changed my life, is soft and crunchy and gooey, all those textures started my love for texture with this taco. And so you're looking for a soft flour tortilla that matches the size of the corn. Taco Bell uses a flatbread, and if you go out and buy a flatbread like a pita at the store, it's gonna be so thick and the proportions are gonna be way off. A tortilla is a version of a flatbread and it, it works better with proportions in this dish. And the next thing we have to do is turn these corn tortillas into taco shells. Now fill up a small saute pan with about half inch of oil and heat it over medium heat. And once it slowly gets up to around 300 degrees, we can add a corn tortilla gently to the oil. And I wanna flip it with metal tongs every three to five seconds in this first part of cooking to sort of toast each side evenly. If the oil is too hot at this point, the tortillas are gonna start to bubble up. So you're gonna have to manage the heat to ensure this doesn't happen. And once the tortilla begins to stiffen, start to work it into a rounded crispy shell. This will take some practice, but just use your tongs to shape the tortilla. The top tongue can keep the tortilla from opening up and the bottom tongue can be used for stability. And I just tilt the pan on an angle to allow that shell to sort of shallow deep fry. And on a nice low temperature, frying these things slowly, making sure we don't fry them too hot. We're just going to rotate around so that we can evenly brown each side until the entire tortilla is dried out, is golden brown and fully crisp. Then pull it out of the oil, drain the excess oil and dry it upside down on a wire rack. And they should all be nice and crispy all the way through. 
Taco shells are ready. Now before we go any further, I need a quick pick me up. And ever since I gotten back home from Italy, my coffee routine has been an utter disappointment. So I've been getting into brewing coffee at home, something that's new to me. And I'm all stocked up thanks to our sponsor today, Trade Coffee. Trade Coffee connects people to the best roasters in the country so they can discover great coffee to brew at home. With over 450 coffees, dark roasts, espressos, blends from more than 55 top roasters, they've got it all so that you can always try something new. And even if you have no knowledge of coffee, they can guide you through the process and help you match the coffees uniquely suited to your taste. And because nothing's better than fresh coffee, every coffee is roasted within 48 hours and shipped directly to you by their roasters so you can make the best cup of coffee at home every day. Their matching algorithm curates coffees perfect for you. And to get set up, you take a quick quiz to find out which coffee best suits you. I got this rich, smooth Amsterdam roast from Joe Coffee. It's delicious. It's got these caramel notes of dark chocolate and some nuttiness some walnut. It's way better than anything I'm used to drinking. And once they've suggested a roast for you, they send it directly to your door. And they've created flexible subscription plans and a diverse assortment of roasts tailored to you. And right now you're gonna get a free bag of coffee if you sign up for any subscription. And with the weather cooling down, now's the perfect time to get stocked up on some incredible coffees. Just visit my link down in the description and have Trade deliver coffee directly to you. Now that I've got my pick me up, let's get back into the recipe. Next up, I need a little bit of shreddice some shredded iceberg lettuce. Now I don't need a ton, I'm just gonna cut a little bit off the head and then I'm gonna slice it as thin as I can. When they're big like this, you can kind of roll it up onto itself and just slice this into a very fine shred of lettuce and get it into a bowl. Lettuce is shredded, then we can take our lime. We need a little bit for the broccoli, but then I'll also cut a half of one, cut the end off and then cut it in half. And this is what's gonna hold your tacos up on the plate, just like this. Save the rest for the broccoli. Now I've got my three soft tortillas. And then I have a, a Mexican blend of cheese here, finely grated. Get this prepped for once the broccoli's done, to microwave them and melt them down to glue to the crispy corn tortillas. And I like to do it on a paper towel to sort of wick up some moisture. And I'm gonna go on with about a quarter cup onto each soft tortilla. And then I'm gonna use my hand and sort of flatten them out so that it melts evenly and not into a mound in the center. Now, once we're done cooking everything, the last thing we're gonna do before assembling everything is throw these in the microwave for about 30, 40 seconds until the cheese is melted. Now with a large frying pan on high heat, add a little bit of olive oil and then allow that to heat up. And then once it's hot, go straight in with the broccoli stems. Once the stems are hot and coated in the oil, season them with some salt and allow them to cook undisturbed. We wanna develop caramelization. We wanna keep the heat high. Once they brown a little bit, you can start to toss them so they can brown evenly. And once they start really browning, then we can add the florets of broccoli. You wanna fill the pan up, but not too much that they start to steam in the pan and develop an unpleasant broccoli aroma. Hit them with salt and get them tossed in the oil and the salt. We really want them to fry and develop color just like the stems. So again, let them cook without messing with it too much and allow those florets to brown and develop a delicious roasty broccoli aroma and not that gross vegetal aroma. And again, once they start to brown, you can start to toss them to ensure they brown evenly. Once they begin to nicely brown, then add the garlic and allow that to cook for two to three minutes to develop some color as well. Then we can go ahead and add about one to two tablespoons of the spice mixture. Get that mixed in and, and coating the broccoli. If you need a little bit more, you can add. The amount that you add is really up to you. Then you're gonna toast those spices for a minute or two, get the broccoli coated in them, and then we can toss in the cherry peppers. Then we can add that juice of a half of a lime, mix it all up and that moisture should slightly deglaze the pan and then they're ready to assemble. Set those aside and now we can pop in our tortilla shells into the microwave about 30, 40 seconds until the cheese is melted. So now our cheese is melted. Here's how I assemble the gluing of it. Now this is gonna be really hot. So I'm gonna hold the shell upside down, place it in the middle and then just start pushing that cheese along the side. Just use your hands and just spread it out. You can almost feel it dispersing throughout the hard shell. And then eventually you see it come and it will glue together. And then I'll hold it upside down to let it really kind of set. And what the beautiful thing is, I broke it, but since it's in the shell, it doesn't matter. It's still gonna work. Now we can place our tacos on a plate with our limes, securing them upright. And we take a spoon and start filling the tacos with the broccoli. Then the sour cream. I like this new container they have that easily dispenses it into the taco. And then I like to add a touch of hot sauce. 
followed by a little bit more of the cheese, and then the lettuce. And then the first bite that you take, you notice this taco is self-contained. Hard shell tacos usually crumble and fall apart at the first bite, but the soft tortilla allows it to keep its structural integrity. And the textural experience of eating this is second to none. First your teeth bite through this soft, warm, pillowy flour tortilla and then it's met with this gooey cheese that's gluing it all together. And then your teeth hit a wall, that crispy crunch of the corn tortilla. And already you're satisfied. But then you get the flavors of the broccoli which are strong, they're roasty, they're not gross broccoli flavors. Along with the heat and acidity from the cherry peppers, the garlic flavor, the spices and all the toppings on top. I love it so much. And because there's so much going on in this taco, you don't miss the meat in the least bit. This is the last normal recipe of the year. We're holiday here on out. Next week is our turkey video for the year, so stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Go feed yourself.